Hey, let's talk about dual mode play. Dual mode play is when you have two or more categories of play in your game and they are separated by as much as possible. But the player still has to do them all. Let's give you an example of what this isn't. In your favorite cyborg shooter game, you can play stealthy cyborg man or you can play um, gun cyborg man and you can run around the world shooting stuff. That's not dual mode. That is just one mode with a couple of different approaches. You can say that having the difference between the mission mode and the city mode in those games, that might be considered dual mode because you generally don't have even even vaguely the same concerns. But they try and bind those modes together as tightly as possible. If you're in the city, you're almost certainly going to run into mission mode stuff. That's supposed to be a knife, I'm sure you can tell. Um, and then, you know, if you're in a mission, you're probably going to run into bits that are more like a city where you're chatting to people and stuff like that. They try and mix their modes up, bring them as close to possible, close as possible to each other, and that's because they want the player to always feel like they're getting a diverse experience. They don't want the player to get bored of the game, so they mix it up in a really fluid and easy to understand way. Skyrim does the same thing. By the time you're bored of being in a forest, before you even notice that you're bored, you see a road and you see a village and you're like, oh, let's go to the village, because that's now what you're in the mood for. These are all about bringing the modes as close to possible as close as possible to each other and making their transition as fluid and as gentle and as easy as possible for the player. Dual mode play is exactly the opposite. That's where you have two modes of play and there is nothing connecting them. You might be wondering, "What? Why why would you do that?" Well, let me give you an example. I'm playing a lot of Kingmaker. Um, and it has uh, two modes of play. And this is something that happens a lot. It's not just Kingmaker. Um, there have been several games in the past week that came out with the same basic premise. But the idea is that you're building a city, and then you are also adventuring. And these could not be more separate. You don't build the city in like an RTS mode or something. Uh, it uses completely different assets. It uses a completely different interface. You never actually see the cities that you're building in RPG mode. There is a gulf between these modes, and that gulf cannot be crossed. When you switch modes, there's a lot. You're like you are you are switched, and you're going to be in the other mode for quite a while. Why why make them so distinct? Why not try to make it so that when you walk around in your cities, you can build city assets while walking around? Well, because that's expensive, and this is cheap. If you completely separate your game modes from each other, you don't have to build nearly as many assets. You don't have to build a lot of uh, content that has to cross over. You don't have to debug things nearly as aggressively. Everything is much simpler. If you wanted to put in a mission in your um, cyborg game where you climb up to the third story of a building to plant a bug, you have to think about whether or not it is physically possible for every single build of cyborg to do that mission. Whereas here, it doesn't matter what build of, of RPG character you are, you can do whatever city building stuff needs to be done. And it doesn't matter what you've built in the cities, you can do whatever RPG stuff needs to be done. This, completely sep this complete separation allows you to build these assets and these pieces really, really cheaply. Basically, you're building two crappy games. I'm not going to say that the RPG side of this is a crappy game, though, because it is built with a lot of care, and there's a lot of stuff there, but... If you were going to build it as an indie dev, you would not want to implement all that stuff. You could build a much, much smaller RPG side and get the same effect. The whole point is, this is cheap. You can build yourself two really cheap games and combine them into one more interesting, larger game. And it's like, hmm, that's kind of a fun thing to do, right? All you need is to have these two cheap games occasionally reference each other. You need to have ways to have the player bounce between these two on the reg. But the gap is here. This big gap is here. So the, you, don't, you don't want them to bounce between them very often. Um, maybe once an hour. Maybe, one, maybe even once every two hours. Otherwise, the player is going to feel like they're wasting a lot of time on the transition between these modes. 
So let me just tell you a little bit about how you might want to connect these modes up to each other uh, and how you might want to think about making the transition work because the best way to make these modes connect is by using something called soft limits. Soft limits are simply limits that don't prevent the player from doing whatever they want. They just prevent the player from doing something specific. So if you're in an RPG adventure and you're wandering around with your uh, cape and your sword and uh, you're, you're killing whatevers and you're wandering around and suddenly, oh look, the bridge is out, oh no! Soft limit. The bridge being out is a soft limit because you can go back and you can do all of the other things that you might want to do. You can go into the forest of the goblins or provide mushrooms for the bog witch or whatever. So you're not being told that you have to switch now. Whether you switch now or not depends on your current mood. If you're still in the mood to go do side quests in RPG land, then that's what you do. And if you're not, then you stop, you go back to the city, and you do the city building thing. A soft limit in a city would be something like, oh, you can't unlock the next tier of town. You can't build your, your palace or whatever until you rescue the elf architect from the trolls. So you come back to the city and you build the, the bridge using your city assets and then you have to go and rescue the elf in RPG mode, bring him back in order to build your next city element. But you don't have to do that right away. You can build all your cities up using nothing but low level assets, you know. Here you've got a farming kingdom now. You have built a million farms because that's what you can build and you like building stuff. So congrats, you have built lots and lots of farms and at some point you're going to realize that it's probably time to go and rescue that elven architect so that you can build yourself a real town. These soft limits are important because if you use hard limits, the player will run into them and it will feel unfair. Like, oh, you must now stop doing city building stuff and go do adventuring stuff feels arbitrary and cruel. Similarly, the opposite also feels arbitrary and cruel. And the, f the last thing you want is to feel like you are forcing the player to do something. You don't want to feel like you're railroading the player. So you want to use soft limits, which is like a railroad, but one that the player won't notice. Kingmaker doesn't do this very well. One of the many things Kingmaker doesn't do well is the way that it transitions between these modes because it uses a calendar, right? And it will just arbitrarily mark some day on the calendar internally. And that day is death day, where if you haven't done the other half of the stuff, you start to die. And you die pretty quick. It's not, it's not a small thing. It's like eight points off of your 30 points every day until it drops below zero and you die. Here's the problem. Not only do they not tell you exactly when this day is, there also are a ton of things that take weeks. Like there are things where you can just sign up to, oh, let's help one of our advisors level up. <clears throat> Two weeks go by, just like bam, 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 bam. You can't break it, you can't stop it, you can't do anything like that. Or you want to wander, you want to go do some adventuring, you can walk weeks away from your hometown and then realize that you have to go back to do the next mission thing. And it's like, oh no, it's going to literally take two straight weeks of walking. This is the sort of thing that works fine in a soft limit game because you'll eventually go back to the town and that, that'll be that. But in a hard limit game, it's like, oh, you lost the game because you liked the other mode too much? That's bullshit. And obviously I'm coming at this from an angle of uh, whining about a video game that I'm playing, but that's something that I see a lot. You need to be very, very careful when you are setting up mode switches. If they feel too capricious, you're literally punishing the player for liking one of your game modes. That's, that's dumb. So don't do that. If you do decide to do this dual mode approach, just keep in mind that you want to make sure that the switching between the modes doesn't feel capricious. You either want to give it a very rigid structure, like you do one level of one, then you do one level of the other, or you're going to want to make it so that it's got a soft limit so that the player can do as much as they want but doesn't have advanced assets or more open areas until they do the other. 
Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about. Let me know what you think.